Hello, everybody. I'm doing a recording in the church because it's nice and quiet down here today. Obviously, we're locked down, but now I haven't got a congregation, but we can still preach the gospel. We can still hear what God has for us. So let's pray. Lord, I thank you that we can meet in this way. We can share your word. We can study the Bible and we can learn more about you as we study through the books of the prophets in the, in the Old Testament and then later on in the New. I pray for your help, Lord, in this in Jesus' name. Amen. The trial of the captives. Grief over Samaria and Jerusalem. The word of the Lord came to Micah the Morishite in the days of Jotham, Ahaz and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, which he saw called in Samaria and Jerusalem. Hear all you people, hearken, O earth, and all that is therein, and let the Lord be witness against you, the Lord from his holy temple. For behold, the Lord cometh forth out of his place, and will come down and tread upon the high places of the earth. And the mountains shall be molten under him, and the valley shall be cleft as wax before the fire, and as the waters that are poured down in a steep place. For the transgression of Jacob is all this, and for the sins of the house of Israel. What is the transgression of Jacob? It is it not Samaria? And what are the high places of Judah? Are they not Jerusalem? Therefore I will make Samaria as a heap of the field, and as plantings of a vineyard, and I will pour down the stones thereof into the valley, and I will discover the foundations thereof. And all the graven images thereof shall be beaten to pieces, and all the hires thereof shall be burned with fire, and all the idols thereof will I lay desolate, for she gathered it of the hire of a harlot, and they shall return to the hire of an harlot. Therefore I will wail and howl, I will go strip naked, I will make a wailing like the dragons, a mourning as the owls. For a wound is incurable, and it is come unto Judah, he is come unto the gate of my people, even to Jerusalem. Declare it not in Gath, weep not at all in the house of Aphra. Roll thyself in the dust, pass ye away, thou inhabitant of Sophia, having the, thy same naked, and the inhabitant of Zainan come not forth in the morning of Beth Ezel. He shall receive of you his standing. For the inhabitants of Maroth waited carefully for good, but evil came down from the Lord unto the gate of Jerusalem. O thou inhabitant of Lachish, bind the chariot of the swift beast. She is the beginning of the sin of the daughters of Zion. For the transgression of God were found in thee. Therefore shalt thou give presents to Moresh Gath. The house of Achzeb shall be allied to the kings of Israel. Yet I will bring an heir unto thee, O inhabitant of Marashesh. He shall come unto Abdullam, the glory of Israel. Make thee bald and pull thee for thy delicate children. Enlarge thy baldness as an eagle, for they are gone into captivity from thee. Comments here. Proclaiming future judgment for past sins, chapter 1 to 3. A prophet's message directed against Samaria reaches to Jerusalem. Verse 1, Samaria is the capital of the northern kingdom. One of the golden calves is there. Micah prophesied to both kingdoms, but primarily to the northern kingdom. All ye people is a call to all the world and how God is going to judge Samaria. 3. The Assyrian is God's instrument of judgment. Or, like he said, look at that again. The Assyrian is God's instrument of judgment. But also, it, later on, you see that Babylonian king, Nebuchadnezzar, it says, was an instrument of God's judgment. God uses other nations to bring about his purposes. Even though they don't believe in him or trust in him, God brings about judgment through other people too. Verse 4, this prophecy is well 
as the remaining prophecies look beyond the local fulfilment to the personal return of Christ to the earth in judgment. So this bit is talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ, which we eagerly await as believers. Jerusalem, with its temple and service, is the appointed place of worship, but now it has become just another high place of heathen worship. Even today, going to church can become an evil because of people who are not faithful to God, who are not trusting in God, who are there for them to make their own ends. Now we are here to serve others, not to meet our own needs in God. Well, we read verse 1 to 5 in the previous broadcast on Saturday, I believe it was. So let's look at verse 6 now. The remainder of the chapter, chapter 1 we're talking about, describes prophetically the destruction of Samaria by Assyria as recorded in 2 Kings chapter 17. Let's have a look at that. 2 Kings chapter 17. 2 Kings 17. It's good to look up scriptures so you can get a good context of what's going on at the time and why and who were um, these prophets were prophesying to. Chapter 16. Just a big, some, some studies in this Bible is helpful, I find, using the Life Application Bible because it gives you lots of notes, background information. Chapter 16 and verse 3 to 18. Let's start reading it. But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. This is talking about Ahaz. And made his son to pass through the fire. According to the abominations of the heathen. Whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. They, they were sacrificing their children to the to the false god Moloch, as the nations around them were doing. And this king sacrificed his own son to appease what he thought the gods wanted him to do. And he sacrificed and burned incense in the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. Then Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to war, and they besieged Ahaz, but could not overcome him. At that time, Rezin, king of Syria, is recovered. Recovered Elah to Syria, and drove the Jews from Elath, and the Syrians came to Elath and dwelt there unto this day. So Ahaz, this is King Ahaz, married to Jezebel, if you remember. So Ahaz sent messages to Tilgath Pilsner, king of Assyria, saying, I am thy servant and thy son. Come up and save me out of the hand of the king of Assyria and out of the hand of the king of Israel, which rise up against me. And Ahaz took the silver and gold and was found in the house of the Lord in the treasures of the king's house and sent it for a present to the king of Assyria. He was trying to bribe the king of Assyria not to attack him by giving the things from the house of God. Now that would have made God angry. And the king of Assyria hearkened unto him. For the king of Assyria went against Damascus and took it and carried the people of, of it captive to Kir and slew Rezin. And king Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Tiglath Pilsner, king of Assyria, and saw an altar that was at Damascus. And King Ahaz sent to Urijah the priest the fashion of the altar and the pattern of it according to all the workmanship thereof. And Urijah the priest built an altar according to all the King Ahaz had sent from Damascus to Urijah the prophet priest made it against King Ahaz came from Damascus. The priest that made it came from Damascus. And when the king was come from Damascus, the king saw the altar, and the king approached to the altar and offered thereon. And he burnt his burnt offerings and his meat offerings, and poured his drink offerings, and sprinkled the blood of his peace offerings upon the altar. 
and he brought also the brazen altar out of the house of the Lord. You know, and put it on the north side of the altar. And King Ahaz commanded Uriah the priest, saying, Upon the great altar burn the morning, morning burnt offerings, and the evening meat offering, and the king burnt sacrifice and his meat offerings with the offerings of all the people of the land, and their meat offerings and their drink offerings. This is really bad stuff, what's going on here. This is all against God, this is. And sprinkle upon it all the blood of the burnt sacrifice and all the blood of the sacrifice and the brazen altar shall be for me to inquire by. He was using the altar that God has established for the temple and he was using it for worshipping his other gods. Thus did Uriah the priest according to all the king Ahaz commanded. The priest would get judged for that. And King Ahaz cut off the borders of the bases and removed the layers off them and took down the sea from off the brazen oxen and were made unto him, put it upon a pavement of stones, desecrating the temple, in other words, doing all the things that he had been commanded not to do. And the covert for the Sabbath that they had built in the house and the king's entry without turned he from the house of the Lord for the king of Assyria. So he broke up all these things and he gave them to the king of Assyria to keep the peace. Now in this day and age we have to be careful that we don't go along with the crowd and do everything. We know to be wrong, we know to be against God and yet we do these things just to keep the peace of the people. Going along with the crowd, you know, we must make our stand and when God says no, he says no and he means no. We must obey God first and nothing else, you know. And now listen to those around us. Verse 8 to 16 in, uh, in Micah says, and It was a lamentation of Micah. The meaning of names reveals a play upon words. Let's go back to Micah now. Micah chapter 1. It's a play on words here, but it has a specific meaning. Lost my page, but uh, let's find it. Let's continue to go into a bit of background. Sometimes when we study, it's a lot of information and a lot of stuff, but we need to remember this is God was speaking and, and he still applies. Some of the words apply to us today. Let's continue a lamentation of Micah. The meaning of names reveals a play upon words. Gath, verse 10, weep town, weep not in Weep town. It's calling the t- calling it a w- town of weeping. Second Samuel one twenty. Afra is a dust town. Safir a beauty town. Zanan a march town. Maroth verse twelve bitterness. Lakish means horse town. Aksib lay town. The Assyrians came to the gate of Jerusalem but did not enter it. You know, there's so much in this chapter. Let's have a look a bit more. Let's look from verse 5 again. Two sons are identified in Micah's message. Two sins are identified in Micah's message. The perversion of worship, which we've seen, where he's put all his things and sacrifices and he's, he's done unto other gods and he's used the things from the temple that God were, des- were consecrated to the work of God. The dissection of Samaria was literally fulfilled during Micah's lifetime. In 722 BC, 2 Kings 17, verse 1 to 18, just as he had preached. See, he did all these sins Ahab had done, and then eventually the Assyrians came and destroyed it all and took them all into captivity. The second sin was injustice towards others. Rampant in the capital cities, these sins infiltrated and infected the entire country. That's what he was saying. You think that it's only happening in one place, but it affects everyone. Sin affects everyone, you know, and the things that people do has an effect on the community around them. That's why we as Christians should be praying for one another and lifting one another up in the things of God and praying prayers of protection over people. 
that we might be the example to others. Verse, one, verse 9 says, Samaria's sins were beyond healing, and God's judgment on the city had already begun. Its sin was not like a gash in the skin, but more like a stab wound in a vital organ. Sin had caused an injury that would soon prove fatal. Samaria was destroyed. Destroyed early in Micah's ministry. Tragically, Samaria's sin had influenced Jerusalem and judgment would come to its very gates. This probably refers to Sennacherib's siege in 701, see 2 Kings 18-19. to Micah declares God's judgment on the city, the city because of the people's sins. The Hebrew of verse 10 to 13 includes clever, clever wordplay. Micah bitterly denounces each town by using puns. Sophia sounds like the Hebrew word for beauty. Zarian sounds like the verb meaning to go forth. And Bethesel sounds like the word for foundation. In read verse 11, chapter 1, verse 11, aloud, substituting the meaning for each city's name. And you will realise the effect of Micah's words, you know. Each of these cities and towns were destroyed because of their idol worship and their refusal to obey God. Moresh Gergath was Micah's hometown. This verse Verse 15 also can also be translated, the glory of Israel will enter Adullam. The terrain surrounding Adullam had numerous caves. Micah was warning that when the enemy approached, Judah's proud princes would be forced to flee and hide in these caves. The cave of Adullam was mentioned in the time of, of uh, in the book of Samuel, I believe, where David hid in the caves of Adullam as well. Micah pictured the devastating sorrows of parents seeing their children taken away to be slaves in a distant land. This happened frequently in both Israel and Judah. Most horribly, when each nation was completely conquered, Israel in 722 BC and Judah in 586 BC. And that's where you could see the prophet Daniel's time as well, when they were taken into Babylon as slaves. You know, when we talk about Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, that's all around that time. So, you know, the message here is be obedient to God and don't use God's stuff for your own personal gain and to get what you want, but to look to God for his forgiveness and his peace and his joy and his love. You know, we're living in difficult times today. You know, we, we are still being tested to see if we remain faithful to Christ Jesus, even in the circumstances that are going on. You know, there's a lot of fulfilment of prophecy going on at the moment. There are still things to come to pass yet, but we need to turn to God and ask him to direct us. We need to search the scriptures and to know God's heart for us. Anyway, that's it for today. That's only a short one today. Because of circumstances, and as I say, there's so many people about, uh, well, you know, I say no more. And I just want to pray, Lord, I pray your blessing upon this word. Help us, Lord, to remember not to put things before you, before you, to put you first in everything, to proclaim your word to those out there, to be an example to the world of who you are and what you have done in our lives. Lord, I pray your blessing now in the name of Jesus. Amen.